So welcome everybody. Welcome to a hot song podcast. Today is uh, June. Oh, <laughs> uh, today is June six. So six six. It's um, supposed to be a powerful day, and it it does feel quite um, interesting today. So June six, twenty twenty four, and our topic tonight is cleansing the soul. And uh, why I picked this is because I had a really good experience in a, from a re retreat. I just came back from retreat this uh, weekend. And um, <clears throat> clearing uh, clearing the, the three past lives, and I actually felt a physical difference just from um, having a much cleaner, um, I would say, energy field. So that's why I want to start talking about how we can each do our, our own as well because I learned how to do it and I want to um, if not teach everyone because it's some of it is it's much easier to teach when it's in person as an in-person I can I can kind of help you um, clear your energy as well it's easier to see what's going on whereas when I'm just doing it online, it's not as easy um, because not that it's not possible. It's just um, I'm I'm not a really powerful um, and able to like, I'm not a powerful clairvoyant where I can actually see energy even online, so I can see what's going on with the energy. I don't have that gift. I'm not like uh, Sifu James, so. So um, when it is in person, then it is easier for me to find out what what is um, in, like in what is in your way. Um, however, I shall do my best to at least give you the basics so that you can start to experiment how to clear your own soul, how to work with past life, and um, why. Why do we do past like clean up our past life? Because there are some issues, some health, um, not really illness. It maybe it sometimes is just um, ailments, or sometimes it's just a, um, I would say a uh, a behavior or relationship pattern that was set up from a previous lifetime and. When you clear the, the the karma from that previous lifetime, it makes it easier for you to shift the pattern, to shift the um, the parts of your body that may be weak from a previous lifetime. So, when you clear the energetic imprints that um, does not really is not really from this lifetime, it's easier for you to shift and change so that you can become healthier, have better relationships that way. So I'm not saying that, you know, clearing the, the karma is the, you know, um, end all and be all. And it is one of the ways that we can take care of ourselves energetically. And I would like to really share this with everybody. So without um, saying more about it, I just want to First, um, let's see, do a share screen so that you kind of know what it, um, oh, not this one, okay, let me that, this one then, I'm just doing a share screen, um, okay, so um, what I want to cover today is really do, we're going to have a, a very brief presence meditation and then um, guardians. So what are guardians? Guardians are kind of when you um, come on to this, this, this plane, earth plane, to, to play on earth, this, this earth plane, you didn't just come here all by yourself. You know, you, you, you just dropped off here and, and you have no support whatsoever. No, that's not the case. We always support it. And the way we are supported is that we each have a guardian. And, and um, so I want to talk 
more about the guardian, how we can figure out or find uh, who our guardian is and um, to, you know, just get connected and know what, what, what the guardian is and what the, the strengths of our guardians are. And then after that, um, we'll focus more on the um, process. You know, what do we need to know in order to start cleansing? So doing past life, releasing, tra um, you know, the, the karma and trauma and all that. Okay. So first thing first, though, let's just do take a few minutes to do a presence meditation. So let me just... Uh, close my window a little bit it's just, uh, I can hear a lot of noise coming from the, the outside but anyway so let's start with the presence meditation so let's start by just breathing in so breathe in through your nose deeply and then let it all go Breathe in deeply again. And let it all go. Breathe in one more time. Breathe in deeply through the nose. And then let it all go. Continue to breathe in and out rhythmically according to your own rhythm with the intention of elongating your breaths as much as it is still comfortable for your body. This elongating of your breathing is really to send a signal to your body that you're in a safe space that it is okay to relax. When you elongate your breath, your body will know that you don't have to handle much stress. That it is time to relax. So breathe in through your nose and imagine that you are breathing in pure love and as you breathe out let go of anything that is not resonating with pure love just let it all out and when you breathe out Kind of do a quick scan of your body, wherever it is that you feel that there is some tension, tightness, just allow that part of your body to relax. Let go of the tension in this moment. Just be with yourself. Just know that you are in safe space, you're in sacred space, and allow yourself to completely let go. And when you feel your body becoming more relaxed, and the next thing to do is really to call back all of your energies to yourself. Call back all of your attention to yourself. Bring all the parts of yourself back. We send our energies out, we send our focus out, we send our intentions and attentions outside to the world in this moment though. 
when you're relaxed and comfortable, bring back all of those attention, intentions, energies. Bring all of you back to you. So that all of you can be back into now into this moment you only focus on this moment let go of what happened in the past let go of what you need to do in the future and just be in this moment with yourself and relax your body because you're in this moment you're completely ready to take action when you need to and to just enjoy this moment when you choose to. Just focus on yourself. Take charge of all of your own energy and attention. Bring it all back to this moment. And feel what it feels like to be all here in this moment. Feel what that feels like and remember it. When you're ready, come all the way back into the room as well. Open your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And just be here with yourself. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, you guys are all back here now. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, then let's start. I did mention that I'm going to talk a little bit about the Guardian first. Um, why the Guardian is important, or at least if you... Like some of you may not know, know what your what your um, birth date may be. Um, some of you may not know. A lot of you will know and some will not. However, I just want to introduce this idea of guardian so that you have some um, idea that you're not here by yourself. You, there is always support for you. You may not be able to see the support However, they are around you and you are always supported. And um, guardians, what are guardians? Guardians are kind of like archangels. They, um, so my understanding is that they are like archangels. And um, before we come to earth, before we're here on this playground, our, our soul, exists somewhere else outside of this earth plane. So, and when our soul decided, hey, earth uh, is getting to a, a really interesting cycle now, let's uh, go down to earth to play. When your soul, you know, kind of made that choice, you're, um, you, you don't just, you know, you're not just nowhere and all of a sudden, poof, you're, you're here. You, when you're not on earth, you are somewhere else. And so that somewhere else has a location and it has an affinity um, because each of the guardians, there are 10 guardians all together. Each of the guardians has a kind of sphere of, of um, interest. 
some guardians are really good at um, playing with past life, you know, um, knowing what past lives are, and some are really good at visualizing and they create their reality through visualization. Some guardians really have the gift of words. How do you use words to um, create paint pictures and influence other people and to shape their world? So each guardian has um, specialties, have something that they are particularly interested to um, know more about. And so we all come from one of those, like one of the, the their lineage of the guardians. And when we are here, um, the, the guardians are there as our high level support. So, and um, that's why it will be interesting. It will be good to know a bit more about them. So I'm gonna share screen again so that I can um, kind of guide you how to find a guardian. So there are eight directions and 10 guardians. So this here, this website, I'm gonna um, kind of just put it in the, the, copy this and put it in the chat so that you guys can actually go there. That's where you can, um, that's where you can find out, you know, when you put in your birth date, if you know your birth date, you can find out what your um, guardian is. Let me just put this here so everybody can just go to this website and just put in your Put in your information to find out what what um, that is, and I'm gonna kind of do a demo with my birth data so that you can all um, have some idea what that may look like. And I just go there. Okay, so this is what you will see if you look at the screen now. So my date of birth, okay, I am July baby, and I am way older <laughs> than 2024. Uh, okay, July 31st, I think I am in around this time. So the hour, I kind of know the hour, but I'm not too sure. So you put in all this information and you just press calculate and you would get something like this. So the most important thing is two things. It says here, palace of destiny. So that, that is your direction. There's the direction. And then there is the guardian of destiny. So that is your guardian. Well, this is my guardian, but you when you put in your information, you will find your guide, okay? So questions, uh, I want you all to actually see if you can go do that. So you have some idea you know, which guardian you are if you don't know already. And if you don't know your birth date, then, um, okay, let me see what I can do for you. And if you don't know your, then um, what I can do is actually, okay, let's do this, okay. Okay, so th these are the 10 guardians. There's Chief, Heaven, Earth, Phoenix, Hulk, Harmony, Moon, Snake, Tortoise, and Tiger. And um, so these are the 10 guardians. Why are there asterisks? 
because there are 10 guardians, but there are only eight directions. So which means in some direction, will have more than one guardian associated with them. So um, Phoenix and Tortoise, they both share one of the directions. Hook and Tiger also share one of the directions. So six plus these two means that uh, there are eight directions. Okay. And in terms of guardian of destiny, so these will give you a very high level um, kind of idea of what each of the chief means, or I mean, each of the guardian is about. So chief uh, grants wish protect from harm, from any harm to achieve your wish. And then heaven is turns dream into reality. Earth is walk with you so you'll be able to perform your best. Phoenix guide you to speak with the correct word. Book show you past experiences as in being able to easily access your past life. Or other or skill that accessing past life, you may be skilled at accessing other people's past lives as well. So there are some people that has that talent. Harmony is to connect you to people that can help you to succeed. So those are the people that have um, that is very easy for them to have good connections. Moon is. You can be able to download knowledge that can help you achieve your dream, your goal. Snake can show you how to invest, especially in properties as in real estate. Tortoise is good at clearing blockages to resolve issues. So, um, and Tiger is to provide you with boundless energy to tackle any issues. This is kind of all the high level. So um, one more thing I want to share with all of you is the eight directions. Now, what are the eight directions? This is the north, east, south, west. So we all know those. And then that's only four directions. There. But there are directions like in between north and east, there is northeast. So northeast is 45 degrees away, and then we get to east. And then from east, there is southeast, 45 degrees, and then to south, and then southwest, and then west, northwest, and then north. So that makes eight directions all together. So, so far, questions? No, it's pretty good. So that's a Shifu's um, notes or before that? Is those notes are yours or Shifu's? Are, oh, um, Shifu James um, told us that, I don't know, at least a year ago, maybe even longer. So those are from his notes long time ago. Long time ago. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I think I had it somewhere, but I don't know. That's okay. I I uh, I will give you. I will send you guys this um, print out this this presentation, so you will have that. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank you. So then, um, back. Well, question. Thank you. Yeah, question. There are other things in the chart. Can you describe like Star of Destiny? Are you going to talk about that? I am not going to talk about those because I it's this is I don't want to talk about. Because that is like a whole different, um, okay. a whole different conversation. So okay. for for what we need in 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 dealing with um, like the soul uh, is really just you just need two pieces of information, the direction. So it means the, the palace of destiny. So for me it was north, and then um, however 
it, it can be different for yeah everyone. so what what does that signify i mean i'm east you're north i'm east what does that signify that means okay we'll come to that so yeah okay and then the other thing you need to know is who your um, guardian is. So remember that. Yes. So, however, um, for me, my palace of um, guardian is um, is north and tortoise is my guardian, but someone else can have east and tortoise. So, it does not mean that tortoise is always north. So that's what right. I would say. Yeah. So. That's why you need to know your own, um, you know, palace of destiny, and you need to know the guardian of destiny. Okay, thank you. Okay, wonderful. And um, any other questions before I continue? Okay, yes. Okay, let's see what else do I want to talk about. So, so now that you know the who your guardian is, um, like don't worry about you know what what each of the guardian uh, you know can or cannot do. Like like they those guardians are like archangels. Archangels can do anything. It's just the um, the properties that I I kind of showed you is just. That's their special interest. They like all of them can do everything, but they have their own preference. Just like um for human beings, uh, well, okay, we we are not all powerful, but you know we can do a lot of things. It's just, however, out of all the things that we can do, there there is usually at least one thing that we are um we are particularly passionate about. So you can think of it that way. Okay. So now let's uh, start to talk about what the, the the soul energy is. Okay. So we like I've learned I've been learning a lot of things from Sifu James, um, and uh, one of this. So he has been teaching us about, you know, how to access fifth dimension, six dimensions, and different dimensions, and, and what all of those can do. However, all of that, we use our mind energy. And a lot of people, um, even they are talking about using the third eye. The third eye because of the location of the third eye, it is still because the, the it's, it's within the brain itself. So uh, it is close to um, places where the brain is going to, or your mind is going to um, interfere with the third eye. So when you use your third eye to access information or to do um, work, you are really using mind energy. And now that we are stepping more into the fifth dimension, like globally, we are all shifting to the fifth dimension. So fifth dimension is more about the heart. And the soul energy is really, because our soul uh, is, the location of the soul where, or where we can access our soul energy is really around the heart. So that's why when we are now moving into fifth dimension, soul energy becoming is becoming more prevalent and gets more powerful. So we can actually use soul energy, not just to heal ourselves, we can use that to heal other people. And the way, the best way to access the soul energy is not through the third eye, but actually through something called the real eye. And I've talked about real eye before. Um, actually, it was May, I, I was looking back at my notes, May 4th, uh, 2023. That was, that was this, there was one um, 
one of the, the episodes that I talked about how to start using your real eye where it is and how to um, start to activate it. So I'm just going to do a bit of review of that part. And I can um, send you guys the link to go look at that that episode so that you can you know get the get all the details. So and I just want to share screen now again to um okay, let me just do this. Okay, so where is the real eye? Location of the real eye. Okay. So it is located at the soft spot. So it's where, so if you kind of touch the, um, around the, the lowest part of your nose, there is a part of your nose that is kind of sunk in. Um, and that usually is the intersection of your hairline, where your hairline is, and also where your temple is. So kind of if you the if you drop a an invisible line from your hairline, let's say this is the hairline, and also draw another um, horizontal line that is through your temples, two sides of your temples and where they intersect, that is where your real eye is. Okay. So, um, so for myself, like if you just kind of um, touch your nose to the lowest part of it, okay, lowest part of it here. When you kind of, you know, don't don't just stick into it, but you know, gently touch it. There is a spot where you actually feel that it is a soft spot. So that is where the real eye is. So it is kind of in between your eyebrow and where your eyes are. So just slightly underneath that, the lowest point of your nose bridge, you will feel that there is a point where when you when you slightly touch it, you will feel that that is a sensitive spot, and that's where your real eye is. Okay, so. Know where your real eye is. Everybody can find where your real eye is. Okay. Questions yes. so far? Yes. Okay. So just notice where that real eye is. Vinny, uh, my computer kicked me out. So uh, I miss it. So you said from here, I have to move to here. And it's some so you just you just kind of touch your the you know this right the, right here yeah so it's usually just the lowest part of it okay okay the lowest part of it when you gently kind of push up you will feel uh, there's a sensitive spot do you feel that yeah we have stitch here between two bones okay. So that is the real eye. Okay, right here. Um, where are you? Right yeah. here. Okay, so it's around here, the lowest part of your nose. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Everybody has it? Okay. So that is yeah. the real eye. And then the other thing I want to show is the zero point. So zero point is actually where um, our, where it is in our body that we receive message from our soul. Okay. So the way to, to find it is you kind of touch the body, find where your ribs are. So, um, so, well, both sides of the ribs, you find out the last rib and you just trace upwards 
and where those two ribs touch the breast plate, plate in the middle. So that whole area is, um, is a chakra where that's the, the zero point. So that, that area is the zero point. So See that it again? It's uh, the end of the two ribs? Yeah, you know, each side, the last rib, right? Last mm -hmm. rib from yeah. both sides, because you have your, yeah. your ribs, are, you have a pair of them. So find the yeah. last rib and you just yeah. raise it. And you will find that they come together at a point. And that's where the breastplate is. That's the, there's the breastbone in the middle. Oh. So where those two last rib meet, that location, that is the zero point within your body. Oh, oh right? So okay. it's not right there. It's slightly underneath the skin. So, but it's okay. that. Area. So when yeah. you say activate the zero point, notice what's happening there. You should feel that there is some energy there. Yeah. That's starting to, to get activated. Okay, so those are the wear a bikini next time and draws. <laughs> What? You need to wear a bikini. You need to wear a two-piece two bikini and show us all the. <laughs> I am sure you guys can find it on yourself. Okay, so so those two. I don't need to really show in my bikini. <laughs> you just have to find your the the last rib and then just follow it into the middle. That's where it is. <laughs> Is it bone? Is it bony? No, it's, it's in between, in between the bones. Yeah. The bones. Okay. Stand up and shoot. It's being it's it's down protected down. by the bones. You can stand up and show Tatiana. You got a nice low top. <laughs> <laughs> and it's your uh it's your last rib, right? When right. that rib connect, it's right there. Okay. That's it. Yeah. So. Okay. So yeah. that's the zero point. And that is the zero point. That is where, um, like, that is where the energy comes together, where you and your soul, your physical body and your soul um, can touch and they communicate. Mm. So zero point. Very important to know. So it's not the heart, it's the zero point. Yeah. 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 Not the heart, it's the zero point. The heart is the physical organ, but energetically, it's a little different. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Let's see what else. Um, okay. So now that we know where, I think. I think we know where everything is. Um, oh, one more thing is about 39 inches. I want to kind of talk about 39 inches a little bit. I know I've 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 done 39 inches um, with you all and like two weeks ago or three weeks ago. And um I just want to kind of um Say a little bit more. So 39 inches. 30, from 32 inches to 64 inches, you know, above our head, it's the fifth dimension. So 64 inches is the sixth dimension. But any where the the, the fifth dimension is between 32 inches and you know so within that. So 39 inches is fifth dimension, but it's a very specific place within the fifth dimension where you can access anyone you want and you get protection as well. So that's why 39 inch is what is highly recommended that we all know something of so that we can get that 39 inches. Because when we start to clean our soul and do all of that, 
what happens is we get um, our soul starts to shine brighter and brighter. So, which means that within the the, um, the spirit um, community, they, like they would be able to see us because you know all the other people are just um, mindless people. They they don't know anything. They don't even know they have a soul. However, when you start to work on your soul and clearing it, then you're going to shine out like a bright light. And if you don't know how to protect yourself, you may attract um, the wrong kind of attention. So that's why 39 inches is good um, to do when, when you start to, uh, especially in the beginning, when you start to um, refine your soul to get to a higher um, uh, frequency. And what we are trying to do is, I actually want to show you guys again. Sorry, we're flipping back and forth a lot today, but I want to show you. So when we start to um, work with our um, real eye and, and fire up our um, zero point, then we start to work with our orb. Our orb is really the, um, it's a projection of our soul, what our soul looks like. So it is, and when we start to do that, then we actually would be able to see the different colors within our soul. And this is kind of a um, uh, a chart to tell you, you know, what does that mean? What does, you would see different colors. So what does those different color means? So if you see green, you should, most people, before they start working with their soul, they would see a lot of green, um, maybe even darker colors as well. So this is what that means, is that their, their um, soul energy or, or their, yeah, they are between two and 300. So when you see mostly your orb is green, then this is what that means. And then when you start to you know, work on your, your soul, then you move into the red and then white, blue, purple, yellow, golden, yellow. So those are the different colors. So green simply means that you have, um, you're not very conscious of yourself because green means that it is you're still working from other people's ideas. You're still ticking on other people's ideas. So it is really all those thought forms that's weighing you down. When we start to do go into red, you're moving higher. And then white, you're moving even higher. So what Secret James um, suggests is that, you know, um, when you're in the green, definitely work on yourself. Don't try to help other people because helping other people would actually, um, it's actually not as good for you and for the other person as well because your own energy, your own soul energy is not powerful enough. So when you see green, red and white, um, keep working. But when you start to see your 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 soul color change, changing to blue, purple, yellow, then those are the times when your own soul is refined enough to be able to um, or it's best to get to that that power before you start to work with other, so that you won't um, you're actually helping them rather than putting more stuff onto them. Okay, so so far so good. Yes. Vini, what if I don't see the colors? You will see the color. <laughs> yeah, you will see the color. Don't don't worry. Yeah, uh, excuse me. Thirty two, thirty two inches is what thirty nine inches above thirty two. So 
32 inches just means that that's that you're at the frequency that's high enough to be functioning in um, fifth dimension. Nice. So, but fifth dimension is not just you know this much. It's the range. Uh huh. Uh -huh. It's the range. To, to six to four. To... Yeah. It's 64 and above is six, six dimension. So the range for fifth dimension is from 32 all the way up to um, just below 64 inches. A couple of questions. Um, what was that average 150? What does that mean? Does that mean that most people are on 150? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and the other question is that where would the orb appear? Would it appear at 39 inches? No. 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 It, um, so the orb, so when you start to activate your zero point, it will start, the energy will start to flow. It will start to um, get up to flow into a, um, a ball. And it is still there. But because the energy that you're breathing in from to the real eye, your real eye can start to see that. And then it will see the color. Yeah, you will see the color. Wow. And other people, if they can, they can see the color too. Yeah. Wow. You feel you will feel that there is this column of energy from the, the zero point all the way up to the real eye. So you don't want, so that's that's what we're aiming for. We are aiming to activate that part of, so that your real eye can actually um, start to be able to see. Wow, okay. Why the real eye? Because the real eye is your soul seeing. Whereas oh. the third eye seeing is your mind. So your mind, let's say, it can can um, muddle things up because, you know, yeah, I want the answer to be yes. Right. If the answer is no, but because your mind wanted it to be yes so much, when you're using your third eye, you would maybe change it. Mm. Change what you see. So you, it's not reliable. But the real eye is your soul. Your soul is like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Because it's not um, up, it's not being entangled with your mind. So you can trust the, the, the things that you see with your real eye. Okay. That's why we're starting to work with the soul energy and the real eye. And what is the significance of 39 inches again? 39 inches is to give protection. Oh, it was for protection. Okay, thank you. When yeah. you start to fire up you know, so energy, your, your frequency getting higher, like until you get to um, the, the, the blues and the purples, and after that, the, the, the spirits and the discarnate, like the, the ghosts, meaning they, they won't be attracted to you anymore because you're too high. So you're out of their range. But when mm. this, until you get there, they will come in, you know, hello. <laughs> so 39 inches around your body, your aura, right? 39 inch, yes. So the way yeah. the way that you know you're 39 inch is you start to when you start to um so you you command your body to, to create that frequency of energy so then what i usually do is just have my like at the beginning just have my palms facing each other as your energy expand your palm would just gradually it feels like something that's pushing them apart so at some point it will get to 39 inch apart so if you measure you know, the, mm -hmm. the distance of your palms, it will be about 39 inches when you get to that frequency. Mm. Oh. Okay, thank you. So that's how you know that you know you are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So I think today, um, I, I just want to um, start to do some exercise to activate the real eye and fire up the zero point and ex have you all experience the orb. So you kind of have some idea what that feels like. And I'll give you some time to, if you want to, to practice that. Because the more you practice, the easier it is for you to fire up and get your op going. And I actually want to go through one more thing too, is the, the whirlpool. Because um, when we do cleansing, we do something called whirlpool. So what is a whirlpool? Is your op. When your op spins, it can turn quick enough to create something like a whirlpool to start to clean energy. So it's a world, it, it looks like a whirlpool so that the energy goes in at, let's say it's at one end, it's X, but when it comes through the other end, it's clarified and cleansed then it will become purer energy. So that's what the world pool is used for. It's like on the picture behind you. Um, picture be behind me is just the ripples, but the world pool is kind of like a, a, a cyclone. You can think of it as you know, spinning fast. So this is, this is like, this is a ripple, whereas the the whirlpool, the the your orb is spinning so fast that is my what is, my what you said or o o r b orb o r b orb or or I yeah. got it. So it's a a globe. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions before I begin to? Uh... Okay, so let's uh, let's just. Look at that. 